Pep Guardiola's tactical brilliance spiced up by his delicious possession-based football paved the way for his Barca side to be one of the greatest teams in the history of football. Yet he left the team and at the same time left the world in shock. But why does a man who took a team starving for two years for a trophy to amass 14 walk away after four years? Did this fairy tale have a horror story underneath it? Seriously, why did Pep Guardiola leave Barcelona? To understand this, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's get to it now. It's the summer of 2008, and Frank Rijkaard still has a year left on his contract. He has done extremely well for the team, but after two seasons, he could not get them any silverware. With players like Puyol, Iniesta, Ronaldinho and Messi still on the team's roster and still very much in form, things were looking rather bleak for the Dutchman. After exiting the Champions League semi-finals at the hands of Sir Alex Ferguson's United and leaving Real Madrid to defend their La Liga title, the Barcelona team was nothing but a miserable failure. It ultimately looked like it was time for a managerial change. But with such big shoes to fill, Barcelona's president Joan Laporta had placed his faith in one of Barcelona's own, Josep Guardiola. The Spaniard was instrumental in Barcelona's dream team that went crazy from 1991 to 1994, winning four straight league titles and a European Cup. The only thing on his coaching resume was 12 months with Barcelona's B team. But now, it was time to handle the big boys. Pep got straight to work making changes and implementing his philosophy as he went. With the arrival of the likes of Dani Alves, Gerard Piquet and several others, fans started to have hopes in Barcelona again. Hopes, however, that a poor start to the league killed. But Laporta still believed he made the right choice with Pep. Pep's tactics were simple. Win possession by pressing high, dominate control, and dictate the game with the famous tiki-taka style. In his first season, he achieved what had never been done in football history before, a sextuple of trophies in one year. Not to mention that by 2009, only Celtic, Ajax, PSV, and Manchester United had won the treble. But when Pep put Barca on that list, he didn't stop there. Unable to hold on to the Champions League and Copa del Rey the following season, they still managed to defend their La Liga title after a tightly contested race with fierce rivals Madrid. Barcelona would still grab another trophy that year when Messi's magic overturned a 3-1 loss and won them the Spanish Super Cup. But the 10-11 season would be their toughest yet. With the managerial genius of Jose Mourinho coming to La Liga and with Ronaldo at his disposal, Pep might have met his match. But the El Clasico at Camp Nou proved that Pep might truly be next to none. Madrid's assassination attempt on Messi was met with five unanswered goals and one of the coldest walk-offs in football. Madrid would get their payback in the Copa del Rey, but Pep and his boys would beat Mourinho again in his favourite competition before upsetting the Red Devils again in a repeat of the 2009 Champions League final. Furthermore, as disappointing as 2012 was, with Chelsea knocking them out of the Champions League semis and Real Madrid winning La Liga, Barcelona still managed to salvage glory with a Copa del Rey. The Copa del Rey felt extra special for Barcelona because it marked the end of a journey for the man who was at the wheel. Guardiola's days weren't just numbered, they had come to an end. It was a very sad day for the entire Barca organization. Even Lionel Messi didn't show up to the conference because of how painful it felt to say goodbye to Barcelona's most successful coach in franchise history. With his assistant Tito Villanova taking over the team, Pep would have more than enough time for himself after four long hard-fought years. After all, he did say he needed time to rest. But we all know no manager wins 14 pieces of silverware in four years and calls it a day. Not even Pep, because hidden behind his notion of taking a break, there was the real truth why he left Barca. There was actually quite a lot going on, I'll tell you that. Firstly, Laporta was quite the character, but he and Pep still found a way to get along well. But their bond was cut short when Sandro Rossell beat Laporta in a landslide election for Barcelona's presidency. They say an enemy of an enemy is a friend. So that makes a friend of an enemy also an enemy. Rosell was already on bad terms with Laporta as disagreements between the two led to him resigning as vice president in 2005. Coming into the presidency, he was going to work with a coach that he didn't appoint, but who had already tasted success that he wasn't a part of. This was something he wasn't particularly pleased with. 
So, Guardiola was hit hard with Rossell's new regime, one sipped in bureaucracy. Worse, his ideologies and plans were no longer on the same page with the club and its new leader. Guardiola's headache increased as he started to fight for things that really shouldn't be a hassle, such as training logistics, technical staff incentives, and so on. So when Pep decided to leave the Catalan giants, many fingers were pointed at Rosell, but he denied this accusation and went as far as pointing fingers elsewhere. The locker room to be precise, and he wasn't entirely wrong. The day I see the light go out of my players' eyes, I'll know it's time to go. Those were the words of Pep Guardiola during his spell in charge of Barcelona. The high standards he held in his players were a big factor in their success. But some players felt he should cut them some slack after all their accomplishments. But Pep has never been the type to not ask for a lot from his players. The type of football he wanted Barcelona to play needed that. But he also gave as much as he asked for. When the club was denying Messi the chance to play at the Olympics, he went against the grain for Messi to represent his country in Beijing. In a nutshell, Pep had good chemistry with most of the players. But when this dwindled, Rosell wouldn't let him get rid of players like Dani Alves and Fabregas, who he felt were slacking with their commitment. But Pep didn't agree that this was in any case the reason for his departure. So maybe the problem wasn't the team, but an old friend turned adversary. For two young men who used to work for the same establishment, the media gassed their rivalry to be almost bigger than it seemed. Each in charge of the two biggest clubs in Spain and each with one of the best footballers of the generation, the media always had a field day about the El Clasico. In press conferences before games, the media would throw questions outside of football and more into the drama and rivalry. While Mourinho fed into the hype and took things more personally, Guardiola was more concerned with the beautiful game and the toxicity and the constant bait from interviewers hurt him. So much so that, according to Gerard Piquet, it could have prompted Guardiola to make up his mind to leave Barcelona and never look back. But even if that wasn't enough to make Guardiola leave, the events in the last few weeks of the 2012 season surely pushed Pep to a place of absolute resolve and no return. It's April 21st, and Barcelona had just lost the first leg of the Champions League semis three days ago. Real Madrid sits on top of La Liga heading into El Clasico at Camp Nou. Desperate to close the gap on Madrid, Barcelona would suffer a 2-1 defeat, and Ronaldo would troll the Catalans with the infamous Calma Calma celebration after scoring the winner. Three days later, Barca hosted Chelsea for the return leg of the Champions League semi-finals. They couldn't have had a better start with two early goals and the Chelsea captain getting sent off. Surely Pep would find himself in Munich defending his European title. But late in the first half, Ramirez pulled one back and in the second half, Torres killed Barca's hope with a late one. An English side struggling domestically with an interim coach no one had heard of had knocked out the best team in the world. But how did things get this bad for a team that once seemed unstoppable? Was Pep the problem? Was he now only a fraction of the coach he was? Well, this was more true than it wasn't. Guardiola had given so much that he had no more to give. It wasn't just the players or the club or even Mourinho and Madrid. It was also him. He was exhausted and out of ideas. And after a disappointing April, it felt like the right time to let the world know what had been on his mind for months. As he said in his press conference, Time has taken its toll. I rise each day and don't feel the same. I am going with the understanding that I have done my duty. You can only recover by resting and getting away from everything. It would have been a bad idea to continue. Perhaps it would not have gone wrong, but I have the perception that it would. It is my time to go. Clearly, a peaceful departure was more important to Pep than being right or proving a point. In the four years Pep was there, he achieved with Barcelona what even the best of teams could only imagine achieving. Guardiola's leadership brought a style of football that coaches after him tried to copy. He also made effective use of some of the most gifted talents ever seen in the game like Iniesta, Xavi and Messi. But do you think Pep would have won more or saved the team from the issues it later faced if he hadn't left? Share your thoughts below and don't forget to like and subscribe.